Hi, and welcome back to Lisa's Stamp Studio. The fun fold card I have for you today has a point at the top and the bottom that allows the insert of the card to be pulled out. Here's a quick look at the front, and I'm gonna give you all kinds of coloring tips, as well as making the cutting and the scoring directions for this card super easy. In addition to this card, I have one other to share with you, so make sure you hang with me to the end of the video. If you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, I would love to have you do so. Make sure you click the subscribe button down below and click the small bell icon. If you do, you'll receive notifications when I'm live right here on YouTube, as well as when I share a new video. And if you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you are interested in receiving copies of the current catalogs, you can request them over on my website at lisasstampstudio.com and click on catalogs. Let's head over to the stamp table and let's get started on today's fun fold card. Here's a good close up of the card we're recreating together and you're going to be able to see that there is a pullout insert here underneath this point. Let's go ahead and start by making the sleeve for this card. The designer series paper that I chose is from the Heartwarming Hugs package. And like almost all the designer series papers with Stampin' Up, they are double-sided, giving you lots of options. One side is typically themed for the occasion and the other side is a little bit more generic so you can use it all year round. I'm gonna be using my Stampin' Trimmer. The one reason I love the trimmer is the clear cutting guide. So I'm gonna be able to see where I'm going, which is gonna be really important for today's fun fold card but it includes both a scoring and a cutting blade, and they navigate up and down out of the way so you can keep them on the track at the exact same time. I like to do my scoring on what will be the wrong side, so I want the stripes on the outside, so I'm gonna do my scoring on this side. We are going to score at three and a quarter inch from each end. So we're gonna start on one end first. I'm gonna open up that cutting arm, and I'm going to align my designer series paper here at three and one quarters inch. I love the straight bar here at the top. There's also one at the bottom to ensure that your paper and your cardstock is nice and straight. Then you can go ahead and close that hinge door and then just score at three and a quarter inch. And then I'm going to turn this and I'm going to do the exact same thing now on the opposite side. The next thing we're going to do is designate the center on both ends of this designer series paper. This is four inches wide by 12 inches long. So the half inch point is at two inches. I've gone ahead and I made a small tick mark here. I know that's gonna be difficult to see in the designer series paper. You can use your ruler or you can use your grid paper, whatever is easiest for you. Once you've marked one side, go ahead and turn and mark the other side as well, which I have done. Now I realize that this paper is a little bit busy, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna crease these up. And I'm also going to create a small pencil mark on here to make it a little bit easier for you to see. Right inside the crease, I'm gonna make pencil marks just so that you can see where the score lines are. Down in the video description below, you're gonna find a link that's gonna navigate you over to my blog. There you're going to find a template for this card. What we're going to do now is we are going to cut from that two inch center mark to the top of this score line on both sides. That's gonna give us an angled cut. I'm gonna open up the clear cutting guide here on my trimmer, and then I'm going to close it. I'm going to pivot the designer paper to make sure that the two inch center mark and that center score line here are going to fall within the cutting track, which is this dark area here. That clear cutting guide makes it really easy so that you can see those marks. Now I know that's gonna be difficult for you to see, but there's one here and there's one here. And then I'm gonna bring up the dark blade, which is the cutting blade, and I'm going to slice. And that's gonna create the first angle. Now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna open up the arm and I'm gonna turn the paper and I'm gonna close the track one more time and I'm going to do the other side. So again, looking through that clear cutting track, I'm pivoting it so my pencil mark is here and my other pencil mark is here. Once I have those aligned, we'll go ahead and we'll slice. And that's gonna give us that perfect point. Now you're gonna do the exact same thing now on the other side. I've gone ahead and I've erased those pencil marks to make sure that they won't show once I have the insert ready for the inside of this card. All we have to do now is to connect the points. Now the biggest tip I can give you about this is to make sure that you don't make this too tight because you need to make sure that the cardstock layers are going to slide in here. And the easiest way to do that is with glue dots. So I'm gonna put one glue dot on the inside tip here and I'm gonna place another glue dot on the opposite tip on the outside here. 
that's going to ensure that once these overlap, they're going to stay together. And again, all I'm going to do is just kind of tack them down. It is natural for the designer series to paper to have a little bit of a bow to it. Let's go ahead and work on the focal point for this card. I've chosen the Santa image from the Don't Stop Believing stamp set. I absolutely love this set. The images are so cute and the greetings are really unique. I'll be using my Memento Black ink pad for the image since I'm going to color it in with my Stampin' Blends markers. You can see that this is a rather large image, so I want to give you a tip. I do struggle with some arthritis in my hands, and sometimes manhandling these larger stamps is difficult for me. And my best kept secret is this. This is the pierce mat. I'm going to lay that on my work surface because that's going to give me a little extra ump from the bottom up. You're also going to see that this image is closely related, if not bigger than, the ink pad. So what I like to do is I like to ink the image face up. This is going to make sure that I don't miss a spot. And since I can't do too many things straight, my next tip for you is to turn the paper horizontally. Not only do I have better luck getting it centered, I actually can make sure that it's even. And then make sure you apply firm, even pressure. When you're using these detailed stamps, it's really important that you take your time and you trace out that image, especially in the center. And then you'll end up with a perfect stamped image every single time. Now, while we have that ink pad out, let's go ahead and stamp the greeting that will be on the insert of this card. And for this, I chose the words from the stamp set called Christmas Means More. This has probably been my go-to stamp set for the holiday cards this year that I've created. I love the witty and unique greetings in here, as well as the mixed fonts. I'm going to ink up this greeting in the same memento black ink pad, and then I'm going to stamp that here in the center top. From that same stamp set, you'll see that there's holly and berries here, and I'm going to go ahead and ink those up, and I'm going to add those to the inside of my card for a little bit of visual interest. The one thing I want to call your attention to is that this is going to slide into here. So you want to make sure that you're not stamping your images or greetings too close to these shallow areas where they'll be exposed from the front when we're done. Let's go ahead and work on that Santa image. I have one that's already finished, but I want to talk you through some shading tips here using the alcohol-based Stampin' Blends markers. Now they do come in a combination of both a light and a dark for the same shade. This is going to be real red. They are dual tipped, so you have a thicker end and a thinner end. You're going to choose the one that best suits your project. I prefer to start with the lightest shade first. I often turn my project and not turn my hand to make it easier for me. You're going to use these very much like you would a regular marker. Now it's going to take a few seconds for the alcohol base of this marker to evaporate. And once that's done, you are safe now to go ahead and add the other layer or the darker shade. Now, since this image doesn't have details in the hat on where the darker shade should be placed, I'm going to go ahead and just pick one side. And for today, I'm going to pick the right side. To make it easier for my hand, I am going to turn this project upside down because I'm going to start the darkest shade here along the bottom of the hat, and I'm going to pull it over, and I'm going to pull some of it down. Just like we did with the light shade, you'll want to give this a few seconds for that alcohol base to evaporate because what we're going to do next is we're going to come back to the lightest shade marker and we are going to pull the dark into the light. So we end up with more of a blended highlighted look versus very harsh dark stop and start lines. So I've got my light color here and I'm simply going to pull that one shade into the other. Now it's not even important that you cover the entire area. Because as the alcohol begins to evaporate, this is going to become more of its true tone. The next tip I want to share with you is a little bit about his beard, mustache, and eyebrows. Now I'm going to be using the light, smoky slate Stampin' Blends marker for this. And again, dual-sided so you can pick the end that's easier for you. Because I wanted really soft lines, I'm going to use the thicker tip, which is also chiseled. I very carefully went over and very whimsically added some lines over his beard. Now I know that that looks very, very dark at first, but this is the tip I wanna share with you. Allow that alcohol to evaporate, just like we did with the red. And then once it evaporates, you're gonna come back over it with the color lifter. This is a product that I think is often overlooked. Not only does it help move the color, but it also lightens the color. So it's gonna give this more of an aged gray hair look than very sharp lines. 
I'm going to use the thicker end since I have a broad area here. Now you can stroke over them or if this is a large area, you can run in small circles. And just like before, you're going to need to be patient and allow that alcohol base there to evaporate. And as it does, those harsher lines are going to start to look a little bit more muted, a little bit more shaded. Now, the last tip I want to share with you is regarding the flesh tone. So we're going to work mainly on his nose. And like I said, I have one that's already finished. We have a combination of markers that include ivory and bronze that are intended for skin tones. They work well for other things too. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start by just coloring in his bridge of the nose and the tip of his nose. Once again, you're going to need to allow that alcohol base time to evaporate before we add on some other color. And to give him that rosy look, I switched over to the dark petal pink marker. Again, this comes in the combination, so you'll get the light with it. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to add a little bit of dark here and then up his nose, allowing a little bit of time for that to evaporate. You can then decide whether you like it the way it is, or you can go back over it with the ivory marker and blend it. And then, like I said, I have one that's already finished for you here. I think it turned out beautiful. I've cut several layers of coordinating cardstock for this image. I have Rio Red and Pear Pizzazz since they coordinate with the designer series paper that I chose to use. My silicone craft sheet is a beloved accessory here in the studio. Adhesive, liquid glue, and hot glue will not stick to it. So if I get a little excited with the adhesive and get off the edges, I don't have to worry about fighting a sticky spot here on my work surface. I've gone ahead and added adhesive to the back side of this layer, and that'll get added here to the Real Red cardstock layer. You're going to be able to find all the cutting dimensions and the supplies that I used as well as the pictures for these projects down in the video description below where there is a link. And then I'll add the pear pizzazz layer to this. From that same stamp set, I use the coordinating greeting in here that says it's all fun and games until Santa checks the naughty list. And before you joined me, I went ahead and I stamped that greeting and I did all the layering on the pieces of cardstock. This is going to get layered here across the bottom of the image, and we're going to do that with Stampin' Dimensionals. These pre-cut pieces of foam tape are ready for you to use. Now, I like to use my Take Your Pick tool to help remove those adhesive backings, because there's a paper backing on here. There's a putty tip that's included with this tool that helps you pick up small pieces of cardstock as well as sequins. And this tip is interchangeable, and I've added the paper piercing tool attachment which is easily going to remove the paper from those dimensionals. And then I'll go ahead and add my greeting across the bottom of this layer. Remember the greeting we have for the inside of the card? Well, I cut layers for that as well. And then again, I'll go ahead and use my silicone craft sheet, and we're going to add adhesive to the back side. This will get layered now on the real red cardstock, leaving a very narrow border of that color all the way around. And then we'll flip it over one more time and another layer here of that pear pizzazz cardstock to coordinate with the rest of our card. Now it's just a matter of putting the card together. We are going to slide the greeting to the inside of this card. Next, we're going to add the greeting over the top. You can see what I meant about making sure that you don't stamp too far to the edges, otherwise it'll show through the front. Your placement of your dimensionals or your adhesive is going to be very important. Make sure that your insert is properly aligned. If you don't like to gamble, go ahead and grab yourself a pencil and trace where those areas will fall. And then you can go ahead and use your dimensionals and place those within that perimeter. So I'm gonna place two near the point, and I'll place several here at the top and the bottom within that pencil margin. And then we'll go ahead and remove those paper backings. Before I add my image, I'll go ahead and I'll erase those pencil marks so that they won't be visible when our card is all finished. And then let's go ahead and add this to the front of the card. And I'm looking to do my best to center it and we'll tack that in place. Now my final touch for this card was to add a little bit of sparkle to Santa's brim hat and the ball of his hat and his cuff. And I did that using the Wink of Stella pen. This is a shimmer brush pen that's self-contained, so you don't have to deal with glitter or glue. When you first purchase it, there's a black spacer inside of here, so you're going to need to make sure that you remove that. And you're also going to need to make sure you prime the pen the very first time that you use it. The word push is designated on both sides of the barrel. And if you lightly squeeze it, you'll see that the shimmer paint comes down to the tip. Once the pen has been primed, it's ready to use. And you're gonna go ahead and just brush on the color where you want it. 
If you choose to add this shimmer where there is colored marker or Stampin' Blends, I'm going to give you a word of caution. This also has an alcohol base. So you want to make sure that the pigmentation doesn't get picked up in your brush. And if it does, go ahead and wipe it off so that you don't carry it to another area. The great thing about this Wink of Stella pen is that you can add multiple layers of shimmer over your project. Just give it a few seconds to dry between coats. When you go to store it, make sure the cap is on tightly and you're going to store it vertically. You're not going to store it horizontally. I wish you were here so you could see the shimmer in this. It is so, so pretty. But as I promised you in the introduction, I have one other project that I have created for you using this exact same fun fold. This one uses the bundle called Coming Home. This is the stamp set and the coordinating Home Together dies. This is a really fabulous product. In addition to that, it's not just for Christmas because you can certainly use these houses for other things. Whether you're a scrapbooker, you want to make a card welcome to your new home, or that you've moved, this is a really fun stamp set. You're going to see that there's also some landscape dies in here as well. The best part about this bundle is that there are dies for all of the stamped images in this set. When you purchase in a bundle, it saves you 10%, or of course you can purchase them separately. I did color this with the Stampin' Blends markers once again, and the insert on this card looks like this. Which one of these is your favorite? I would love to know. Would you leave me a comment below? And if you have enjoyed today's video, would you please give it a thumbs up here on YouTube, which is a like, it certainly helps. And I look forward to having you join me next time. Have a great day.